Hello my friends and welcome to The Electric Viking. Now I don't know exactly why, but I was strangely excited today to make this video. Maybe one of the reasons why is because I'm convinced this car is going to change the world. Now not specifically this car, but this concept. Now, if you're not already aware, around 45% of the entire world electric car market is in China. Now, when I say 45%, what I mean is 45% of global EV car sales are in China. Now, pretty much all of those vehicles are made by Chinese companies, except for Tesla vehicles, which obviously are made by Tesla. But let's be honest, I mean, who works at Tesla China in Shanghai? It's probably 95% people from China. So, in theory, really, all EVs in China are made in China. Where do the parts come from? China. Where do the batteries come from? China. Well, you can't say that about any other car market, can you? Now, this is one of the reasons why EVs are very extremely affordable in China. Now, if you think EVs are expensive, which, well, they kind of are in most parts of the world, not in China, though. And one of the cars that started the revolution in China for affordable vehicles that literally almost anyone can afford. Now, let's just clear this up for a minute. Yes, most people in China can afford a $4,000 EV. Believe it or not, that is actually true. Extreme poverty has been eradicated from China. There's still a lot of poverty, people living near the poverty line, but most people in China can actually afford a $4,000 vehicle. Now, that is what I love about this car. It gives autonomy. It gives access to getting places to be able to carry things to your workplace, carry your family around. To the average person and the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV, which is the second most popular EV in the world, even though it's only currently sold in one country, which is China. Though, though, very importantly, that is about to change very soon. That's going to be the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV is going to be sold in Europe for around about ten thousand dollars. So it will also be the most affordable EV in Europe. Now, some of you are probably saying, "Yes, Viking, but it's a quadricycle." True in China, not that anyone in China cares because they can drive it as a car, it doesn't make any difference. Technically, selling this car in Europe or Australia in the United States, it would technically be called a quadricycle. Now, that is only for the reason that it lacks some safety features in the base model. Now, the vehicle that'll be sold in China will technically be a car because they're adding in those features to give it the ability to be technically called a car. So, for all intents and purposes, this vehicle is going to be on sale in Europe within the next few months at a price that most Europeans can afford. Now, what's great about it is the interior is quite a bit bigger than it looks. Now, this is a micro car, but the interior is bigger. And the great thing is about this vehicle here, it's the new updated version, which is now bigger. Now, why is it bigger? Well, I'll tell you why it's bigger. It's bigger so that they could fit in a bigger battery pack and a bigger electric motor. It's now got double the power and double the range. And it uses lithium iron phosphate batteries, which as I've been going on for ages, and as Elon Musk has just said, are the future of batteries. Now, Elon has actually said that he believes that within the next probably five years, that two thirds of all electric cars being sold on the market will be lithium iron phosphate batteries. And one third will be either NCA or NCM chemistries. And maybe there's obviously in that area there the possibility for some cars having super caps but that's a whole nother ball game so lithium ion phosphate batteries which well obviously have some huge advantages to them including the fact that they basically don't degrade for a long long period of time and you can charge the batteries to 100 percent without seeing any degradation lithium manganese batteries or else nma and nca batteries chemistries do degrade if you charge them to 100%. So you only want to do that if you have to, if you're going on a road trip or something like that. And also, lithium ion phosphate batteries handle fast charging much better than other battery chemistries. So the battery is good, twice the size, and the car actually, for Chinese, for the Chinese, actually isn't really any different in price. So it's twice as good, but it's not really any different in price. It's actually very close in price to this, the other model, the standard model, which is obviously nowhere near as good as this new model. So why is it nearly the same price? Well, before I answer that question, I'm gonna tell you some specs of this vehicle. 
The car's wheelbase has been stretched by 7 centimeters or 70 millimeters to 2,010 millimeters, or around about a 2 meter wheelbase. Instead of 1940, this increases the length of the car overall by 7.7 centimeters to 2.997 meters. Now, this will provide the rear seats with more leg room, but like I said, the real reason for this change is the battery. The new battery is much bigger. Now, the current one, the base model, comes with a 9 kilowatt hour battery, and the higher, the more expensive model comes with a 14 kilowatt hour battery. Now, that gives it an NEDC range of 120 kilometers for the base model and 180 kilometers for the higher range model. But obviously, you're not going to get those ranges in the real world. Take off about 20%. That's all the real world range you'll get. Now, the new one will have an LFP battery pack with 26 kilowatt hour battery. So the new one, the battery is literally three times bigger than the base model and twice as big as what was previously the higher end model. 26 kilowatt hour battery in a car this size and weight is actually really big. That's going to give it a range of about 300 kilometers NEDC, but I think you're going to get 300 kilometers in the real world from this car as long as you don't drive it aggressively. Now, obviously, like I said, there's also a more powerful motor that gives you 30 kilowatt, which is around about 45 horsepower. That's a 50% increase in power. Now, there's a few other little changes beside those differences. The new version has a redesigned front and rear light units and a few other little insignificant details, right? But the main attraction to this vehicle is that it comes at an affordable price, like I said before. Now, the current Mini EV doesn't qualify for government incentives for the buyer because its range is too short. And I think this is a good idea. I think other governments should have a similar rule, right? That EVs that have a below, say, 200 kilometers of range shouldn't qualify for an incentive. I think that is logical. However, this new model will qualify for that incentive. And the incentive is around about two and a half thousand US dollars. So this will negate the cost of the increased battery size and making the vehicle bigger. So basically, you're going to get one of these vehicles with a 300 kilometer range that's bigger than the previous model for the same price of 5,000 US dollars. And that is insane, right? You've got to tell me, you can't tell me this wouldn't be a car you wouldn't consider potentially for yourself or a family member if you could get one of these cars in your country for 5,000 US dollars. It has a 300 kilometer range and it no longer is limited to a slow speed. I mean, it's got double the power now. So you've got plenty of power now to not feel like you're endangering yourself in high speed traffic, say on a freeway or something like that. Now, apparently, Car News China says that the long range version will earn Wuling more NEV credits per car sold. Now, these credits trade between 500 and 1000 US dollars right now. So they give the company that builds the car a nice margin on such a cheap car. And that's how companies are making money in China selling these cheap cars. There's a number of them now in the market that are around this price, which some of them are quite impressive, actually, similarly impressive to this, although this one now has the biggest battery. But the reason these companies can make these vehicles, well, one of the reasons they can make them at such an incredible price is because they're getting credits from the Chinese government. So even though Wuling actually only makes a $24 profit, it's true, 24 US dollars in profit on this car, they actually get around a thousand US dollars from the Chinese government, and that's where their profit is on the car. Now, in addition to that, the Chinese government will give the buyer two and a half thousand US dollars as an EV incentive. Obviously, the Chinese government wants you to buy EVs, makes sense, wants you to buy their own vehicles, makes sense, reduce smog in cities. Because like I've said in my other video recently, that is literally killing people, literally removing years off their life. In China, I think it's about four years are taken away from the average person's life thanks to pollution. Crazy numbers, I know it's insane. Even in your country, in Australia, in America, around two years per life is removed from your life because of pollution. Now, obviously, the quicker we get EVs on the road, the quicker we can delete that pollution. So those incentives, in my opinion, are a great idea. Now, there's been new competitors popping up all over the place in this mini EV segment in China. It's really awesome to see that there's so much competition. They're all driving prices lower. They're trying to, they're pushing each other to make better products. To be honest, it's exciting stuff. I don't know a lot of companies just want to talk about Tesla or they just want to talk about they either bag Tesla or they praise Tesla because that's getting clicks. But let's be honest, there's a lot more going on than criticizing Tesla or appraising Tesla. Tesla, I love the company. I'm heavily invested in them. But 
You've got to know about what's going on in the market. There's huge things going on in the market. BYD is really kicking goals. There's other Chinese companies in China. And I'm telling you now, the Chinese automakers are going to take an enormous slice of the world's automotive market through vehicles like this and others that are coming out soon that I've made other videos on. I'll put those other videos in the description below. Huge things are happening in the automotive market. There's going to be an enormous slice of the pie, more than 50%, that will be taken away from American automotive manufacturers and from European automotive manufacturers and from specifically even potentially more so Japanese automotive manufacturers and taken away by the Chinese. And that's just inevitable. Whether you like that or not, that is what's happening. This car really represents that to, in some degree. And the long range Hongwan Mini EV might just keep whirling one step ahead of the competition. It's exciting to see. And I can't wait to see whether or not this car in this format is the one that actually comes out in Europe soon. It may very well be. Thanks for watching the channel. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.